In Monster Hunter World, there are many aspects to consider when taking on a hunt. The target, your weapon, these are all important, but hunters who want optimal performance need to consider the build they use via the armor and weapons they wear. I'm Dabblade, and in this special episode, we're bringing you an extra budget build for each of the weapons in Monster Hunter World. The skills that you gain from armor and even some weapons can help shape your hunters into specialized hunting machines. But not everyone will be at the same point where they can get the most optimal gear. Some players will have just got to endgame, some players may struggle against certain monsters, some players may not have friends to play with, others may not even have access to the updates that Capcom have given us, leaving them with the base vanilla version of Monster Hunter World. So with this episode I hope to bring you some extra ideas with these additional budget builds. Now before going into these budget builds I do have to put a little bit of a disclaimer here. Some of the builds do use some of the rarer jewels that you can find in Monster Hunter World. Nonetheless all of these jewels can be found with just the base vanilla version of Monster Hunter World. You don't need any additional content installed. But unfortunately some of them can be difficult to get and you have to rely on luck. Now we'll be going through these weapons in no particular order, it's just the order I have them set up in my pre-made loadout. So first with the charge blade. This budget build is focused on DPS and health regen at the same time, allowing you to potentially bring down monsters quite quickly, especially if they're weak to dragon, whilst at the same time being able to add some survivability thanks to the health regen aspects of the build. So for this you'll need the Nergigante Helm Alpha, the Damascus Male Beta, the Nergigante Van Braces Alpha, Nergigante Coil Beta and the Dodogama Greaves Beta. I'm also using an Artillery Charm 3 and for my weapon I'm using Devastation's Fawns with a health regen augmentation on it. As for the jewels, none of them are really mandatory for this build to work. I've gone for a Charger Jewel to increase the focus skill, Iron War to provide a little bit of extra block potential, Vitality Jewels to increase my health and Expert Jewels just to add a little bit of affinity. But the majority of these are purely subjective. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, 850 free attack, blue sharpness, 31% affinity, which is actually 51% so long as you have maximum stamina, 150 dragon rating with high elder seal, and you have impact files. As for your defenses, you have fairly high defense, especially against fire, but you're fairly weak to thunder and dragon. As for the skills, you'll have attack boost to level 4. Getting attack boost to level 4 is quite vital for most weapons, as it not only provides you with that boost to your attack, but it also gives you an extra 5% affinity. Health boost level 3, increasing our maximum health to 150. Focus level 3, the main reason charge blade users want to go for focus is it allows you to charge up your files quicker when attacking a monster. This means you can attack less before your files are fully charged, allowing for more super amped elemental discharge attacks. You have artillery level 3 which increases the damage of our file bursts. Critical eye level 2 increasing our affinity slightly. Agitator level 2, a byproduct of the gear but nonetheless can come in handy for increasing our attack and affinity for when a monster becomes enraged. Maximum might level 2, that increases our affinity by a percentage so long as we have maximum stamina. Capacity boost level 1, that gives us an extra file for our charge blade. And guard level 1, allowing for less penalties when blocking a monster's attack. Level 1 combined with a charged charge blade shield is often able to pretty much block any incoming attack by the strongest ones with little flinch. You also have the set bonus Nergigante Hunger which provides you with haste and recovery allowing you to recover health when you attack a monster. This combined with the health regen augmentation if you can get one means that your attacks especially your super amped elemental discharge will restore a lot of health for your hunter potentially meaning that you don't have to stop to use potions all the time. So as you can see this build is a bit of an all-rounder aimed towards damage and health regen. But you also have survivability aspects thanks to having 150 health as well as the charge blade's innate ability to guard. On top of that the build's not too difficult to craft whatsoever and there are no real rare gems required for this. The only one I have is the charger jewel which in all honesty if you can't get it it won't make too much of a difference with this build. You should still be able to charge up the files quite quickly and you'll have all the same benefits when it comes to attack and health regen. Personally out of the budget builds this is probably my favorite but then again I am a little bit biased towards the charge blade when it comes to the various weapons. But anyway let's move on to the next weapon which is the switch axe. This switch axe budget build is an exhausting knockout build using the Jagras Raider 3 which has the unique exhaust file type attached to it. This build is a DPS build focused on exhausting a monster, leaving them tired and open, or even knocking them out, thanks to the KO skill used in this build. So for this build you need the Dragon King Eyepatch Alpha, the Kushala Kista Beta, the Valhasak Braces Beta, Nergigante Coil Beta, and the Nergigante Greaves Beta. 
I'm also using a KO Charm 3, and for my weapon, like I said, I'm using the Jagras Raider 3, which has an affinity increase augmentation on it, a slot upgrade augmentation, and then an augmentation of your choice. To be honest, I would have put a health regen augmentation here, but unfortunately, it already had a extra affinity increase, and I've run out of Axe Stream Stones. As for your jewels, there are a few mandatory ones here to get the most out of this build. An elementalist jewel is one of the ones required to boost the attack power of weapons who have their element or ailment hidden, as is the case with the Jagras Raider. Afterwards, tenderizer and mighty jewels are strongly recommended, and two attack jewels. Yes, you get one attack jewel for getting through the game, but unfortunately you're gonna need a second one to make the most out of this build. Afterwards, I've added drainer jewels, to help the exhaust files of our weapon and then I've added a flawless jewel to boost our attack when we're actually at full health. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 826 attack with blue sharpness, 50% affinity, which is actually 100% so long as you're going for monster's weak points, no element, exhaust files with a 210 rating when it comes to the files, with a decent defense against fire and ice, but you're fairly weak to thunder and dragon. As for the skills, you have the following, attack boost level 4, as I said, go to level 4 to increase your attack, as well as give you that extra 5% affinity. Weakness exploit level 3, weakness exploit increases your affinity so long as you're going for monster weak points. Level 3 gives you 50% extra affinity. Slugger level 3, this increases the knockout buildup when you're going for a monster's head potentially knocking them out completely, leaving them stunned and open to more attacks. Stamina Thief level three, this increases the exhaust rate of our exhaust files, potentially leaving the monster exhausted and again open to attack. Maximum Might level three, increasing our affinity so long as we have maximum stamina. Handicraft level two, increasing the sharpness of our weapon. Peak Performance level two, which increases our attack so long as we have full health and non-elemental boost level 1. This is thanks to the Elementalist Jewel, increasing the damage of non-elemental weapons. So there we have it, this exhaust and DPS knockout build for the Switch Axe is a little bit of a quirky build, it's not the most traditional out there. But I wanted to do something different to what I did in the original budget build for the Switch Axe, which utilised the Axe of Demons. That one was a more straightforward DPS build. This one focuses more on crowd control, thanks to being able to not only knock out a monster, but exhaust them too. The Jagras Raider is the unique weapon in the fact that it comes with exhaust files. And I wanted to do a build demonstrating it. Of course, using things like the Impact Mantle can definitely come in handy with this build when you're going for monsters' heads, as it increases the knockout potential even more. Unfortunately though, there are a few rarer gems required for this build to work efficiently, namely the Elementalist Jewel as well as the two Attack Jewels. But if you're able to get them, then this build can be quite fun. However, be aware that most Elder Dragons cannot get exhausted, so Stamina Thief and Exhaust Files may be wasted on those. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Bow Budget build. Now this build is a DPS focused build utilizing one of the strongest bows in the game, which is the Anja Arch 3. This means that it is a fire DPS elemental build. So for this build you need the Kadachi Helm Beta, the Raphalos Mail Beta, Kaiser Vambraces Beta, Raphalos Coil Beta, and the Lavasiov Greaves Beta. I'm also using a Fitness Charm 3, and for my weapon I'm using the Anja Arch 3, which has three affinity increase augmentations on it. Having three affinity increase augmentations will cancel out the negative affinity this bow normally comes with. Anyway. As for the jewels, unfortunately there are a few annoying mandatory ones you need to try to get. This includes the Mighty Bow Jewel, as well as the Four Shot Jewel. The Mighty Bow Jewel provides you with the Bow Charge Plus skill, and the Four Shot Jewel provides you with the Normal Shot skill, which we'll talk about in a minute. Anyway, afterwards, I've gone for Blaze Jewels to max out the Fire Rating, and a Physique Jewel to add some more extra constitution. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 Health, 100 Stamina, 258 Attack, 0% affinity, which is actually 50% should you be going for monster weak points. 510 fire rating, this is actually maxed out and can't go beyond this. With a decent defense, especially against fire, but you're fairly weak to water. As for your skills, you'll have constitution level 5. This basically increases how fast your stamina will recover. You can drop this down to level 3 and utilize dash juice and get the same effect, but having it at level 5 will just save on dash juice if you're low on them. You'll have fire attack level 4, increasing the fire rating of the bow. You have Weakness Exploit level 3, Normal Shots level 1, which increases the damage of our Normal Shots, so shots performed with R2 or RT. You have Power Shots level 1, increasing the damage of our Power Shots, so 
shots performed with circle or B, and you'll have bow charge plus level one. This allows us an extra charge when we're actually charging up the bow or shooting consecutively. You also have the set bonuses, Raphalos Mastery, Critical Element, increasing the elemental portion of our hits against the monster. So there we have it. This, in all honesty, is a very strong bow build, but unfortunately, it kind of relies on the Anjanath Arch, as well as the Mighty Bow and Four Shot Jewels to be at its best. You can, if you want, swap out the Anjanath Arch for other elemental bows if you want, but if you do so, then don't forget to swap out the Blaze Jewels to match whatever element you are using. Regardless of if you're using the Anjanath Bow, or another element this is still quite a potent build and considering it's not that hard to craft it's quite a potent budget build anyway let's move on to the next build which is the lance budget build this build is a little bit of an all-rounder build providing you with high affinity defensive options high amounts of health and even health regen so for this build, you'll need the Nergigante Helm Beta, the Dober Mel Beta, the Valhazat Braces Beta, the Nergigante Coil Beta, and the Nergigante Greaves Alpha. You also need an Exploited Charm 2, and for my weapon, I'm using the Garon Dahara 2. This has an Affinity Increase Augmentation, and then an Attack Increase Augmentation on it. You can, of course, swap one of these out as well for the Health Regen Augmentation if you so desire. As for the jewels, there is only one real mandatory one here, which is the Elementalist Jewel, which would boost the attack of our weapon as the element is hidden. After that, I've added a Shield Jewel to allow me to block unblockable attacks, Iron War Jewels to increase the potential of our blocking abilities, and Vitality Jewels to increase our health. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, 506 attack, white sharpness, 75% affinity, which is actually 100% so long as you're going for monster weak points, with a decent defense against water, but you're fairly weak to thunder and dragon. As for your skills, you'll have attack boost level 4, health boost level 3, guard level 3, maximum might level 3, weakness exploit level 2. We only need weakness exploit at level 2, as putting an extra point in it would actually be a waste, as you cannot go over 100% affinity. And with maximum might, attack boost, and weakness exploit at level 2, we easily reach that cap. Agitator level 1, this is a byproduct of the gear but can come in handy as it increases our attack and affinity when a monster becomes enraged. Peak performance level 1, a byproduct of the gear but nonetheless can still be useful. Guard up level 1 which allows us to block unblockable attacks and non elemental boost level 1. We'll also have the set bonuses Nergigante's Hunger, providing us with haste and recovery, allowing us to recover health when we attack a monster. So as you can see, this is a little bit of a jack of all trades, and in all honesty, it's actually still quite a decent build. The only glaring downside about this build is the attack rating. The Adogaron weapons unfortunately have low attack rating, but instead it has high affinity and natural white sharpness. But with 100% affinity when you're going for weak points, the low attack rating shouldn't matter too much. On top of that as well, you have awesome survivability aspects to this build thanks to the large shield the Lance has, as well as the health boost thanks to the vitality jewels implemented into the build. Overall, this alongside the charge blade and bow builds was one of my favorites. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the dual blade budget build. This is an elemental DPS budget build for the dual blades as the dual blades attack fast, allowing them to utilize elemental attacks quite efficiently. So for this build, you'll need the Kirin Horn Beta, the Raphalos Mail Beta, Kaiser Van Braces Beta, the Raph Soul Coil Beta, and the Death Stench Hills Beta. You're also using a Handicraft Charm 3, and for my weapons, I'm using the Jira Hatchets 3. This has an Affinity Increase Augmentation on it, a Health Regen Augmentation on it, and then an Augmentation of your choice. I went for an extra Affinity Increase Augmentation. As for your jewels, none of them are really that mandatory. However, if you can get a hold of a sharp jewel which provides you the protective polish skill, I would strongly recommend it. Afterwards, I've gone for stream jewels to boost the water rating of our weapons, expert jewels to boost our affinity, and a slider jewel as the dual blades is one of those weapons that can make use of sliding attacks quite efficiently. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 287 attack, white sharpness, 25% affinity, 270 water rating, with a decent defense against fire and thunder, but you're fairly weak to ice and dragon. As for your skills, you'll have handicraft level 5, critical eye level 3, weakness exploit level 3, windproof level 2, giving us a little bit of wind resistance when fighting monsters who utilize their wings quite often, Water attack level 2. Unfortunately, we can't go above level 2 for these dual blades we're using. Marathon runner level 2, which reduces the depletion rate our stamina drops when in demon mode. Affinity sliding, which increases our affinity by 30% once we slide down a slope. And protective polish level 1, which prevents any sharpness loss for a limited amount of time once you sharpen your weapon. You also have the set bonuses, Raphalos Mastery, Critical Element, 
increasing the elemental damage portion of our attacks, which is vital for most elemental builds. So there we have it. As you can see, it is a straightforward DPS focused build that utilizes elements. You can, of course, swap out the Jura hatchets for whatever other weapon you want that has an element. But if you do so, don't forget to swap out the stream jewels to match whatever element you are using. This also means it's not really much of a universal build, as this build shown here will only really work against monsters who are fairly weak to water. If you do come across a monster who is quite resistant to water, then you really need to consider swapping out the Jira hatchets for another set of dual blades utilizing a different element. But anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Greatsword budget build. Now this is a straightforward peak performance budget build for the Greatsword utilizing the peak performance skill to increase our attack, potentially providing maximum damage. So for this build, I'm using the Dragon King Eye Patch Alpha, the Doba Male Beta, Death Stench Grips Beta, Nergigante Coil Beta, and the Death Stench Heal Beta. I'm also using an Unscathed Charm too, and for my weapon, I'm using the Jagras Hacker 3, which has a affinity increase augmentation on it, attack increase augmentation on it, and then a health regen augmentation on it. As for your jewels, unfortunately, some of these are a little bit tricky to get. First of all, you need an Elementalist jewel, as the Jagras Hacker 3 is an Elementalist weapon, as the water rating is hidden. Afterwards, I've gone for Tenderizer jewels and Maximum Might jewels to boost our affinity a Flawless Jewel to max out peak performance, and a Charger Jewel to max out focus. This is then followed up by Expert Jewels just to boost our affinity a little bit more. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 1162 attack, blue sharpness, 40% affinity, which is actually 90% so long as you're going for weak points with no element, and you'll have a decent defense against fire, water, and ice, but you're fairly weak to thunder and dragon. As for your skills, you'll have attack boost level four, critical eye level four, Weakness Exploit level 3, Focus level 3, Focus is good for the Greatsword as it reduces the amount of time needed to charge up your weapon during your charge attacks, Peak Performance level 3, Handicraft level 2, Maximum Might level 1 and Non-Elemental Boost level 1. So there we have it, as you can see it is a fairly straightforward DPS build utilising the Peak Performance skill to try to boost our attack even more than we can. Of course though it is not the easiest to build as there are a few annoying jewels to get. But nonetheless, if you're able to get your hands on all of the jewels here, you'll have quite a potent build at your hands. Also, if players finally get their hands on the Wyvern Ignition from the event quest Every Hunter's Dream, you can easily replace the Jagras Hacker for that weapon as it is arguably one of the best Elementalist greatswords in the game. Anyway, let's move on to the next budget build which is for the Longsword. Now this build has some very high DPS, but unfortunately it is one of the more trickier budget builds to actually obtain craft and put together as it utilizes the divine slasher which is achieved by taking on arena quests found up in the gathering hub arena quests require you to take on certain challenges with preset loadouts but nonetheless if you get the divine slasher you'll have a very powerful weapon at your hands and combined with other elements can be a very incredibly strong build especially for a budget build so for this build you'll need the Nogagante Helm Alpha, the Kushala Kista Beta, the Kaiser Vambraces Beta, Nogagante Coil Beta and the Death Stench Hills Beta. You also need an Exploited Charm 2 and for my weapon I'm using the Divine Slasher with an Affinity Increase Augmentation on it. As for your jewels, here's where things get a little bit more tricky. You'll need an Elementalist Jewel to boost the power of the Divine Slasher as its element is hidden a sharp jaw to provide you with protective polish, an attack jaw to get attack boost to level 4, a mighty jaw to max out maximum might, and then the remaining jaws are down to personal choice. I went for expert jaws and an extra handicraft jaw. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 851 attack, white sharpness, 51% affinity, which is actually 100% so long as you're going for weak points, with no element. You'll also have decent defenses against fire, water and ice, but you're fairly weak to thunder and dragon. As for your skills, you'll have Handicraft level 5, Attack Boost level 4, Weakness Exploit level 3, Maximum Might level 3, Critical Eye level 3, Protective Polish level 1, and Non-Elemental Boost level 1. This longsword has one of the highest attack values of that weapon category, and that combined with its high affinity and white sharpness means you'll be dishing out a lot of damage. That white sharpness can be maintained for longer thanks to protective polish, but even if it drops into blue sharpness, it can still be very deadly. If you're able to get the draws, then I would strongly recommend putting this build together as it is a fun longsword build to use. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is an insect glaive budget build. This build is a DPS slash health regen build. So for this you'll need the Nergigante Helm Alpha, Kushala Kista Beta, the Valhazak Braces Beta, Nergigante Coil Alpha and the Nergigante Greaves Beta. I'm also using an Exploited Charm 2 and for my weapon I'm using the Xeno Shimena which has a health regen augmentation on it. As for your jewels, the main mandatory one you'll require is the Attack Jewel 
afterwards if you're able to get them flawless jaws as well as a tenderizer jaw and then finally a sharp jaw to provide you with protective polish and expert jaws if you don't want it done here you should have a build with 100 health 100 stamina 642 attack white sharpness 60 percent affinity which is actually 100 percent should you be going for monster weak points 120 dragon rating with low elder seal and your kinsect bonus will be a stamina boost you'll also have Decent defenses, especially against water and ice, but you're fairly weak to thunder and dragon. As for your skills, you'll have attack boost level 4, critical eye level 3, weakness exploit level 3, peak performance level 3, maximum might level 3, handicraft level 2, and stamina surge level 1. Stamina surge increases the rate at which you recover stamina. You'll also have protective polish level 1, and you also have the set bonus Nergigante's Hunger, which provides you with haste and recovery, allowing you to restore health when you hit a monster, and this coupled with the health regen augmentation means that you should be able to restore a decent amount of health. Now there are a few aspects here that people may question. Firstly, why have I gone for maximum might when using an insect glaive? As normally when you're in the air with the insect glaive, you'll use up a lot of stamina. Well, it's because the insect glaive does its most DPS when it's actually grounded and you have both feet on the floor. Staying on foot means you don't use any stamina up, allowing you to utilize the affinity bonuses that maximum might provides. So while yes, being in the air may add to your survivability in that at times, when you're in a prime opportunity to deal damage, say you've knocked over a monster, it's best to attack it from the ground, making use of that maximum might skill. Also, people may question that I've actually got over 100% affinity. So potentially you could drop maximum might down from level 3 to level 2 and use another gem of your choice. A recommendation off the top of my head would be to utilize the flight jewel, allowing you to deal more damage whilst airborne, especially if you prefer to use the insect glaive in an airborne manner. But nonetheless, this build can still be quite potent. Peak performance isn't really much of an issue in terms of losing it, as thanks to the haste and recovery and health regen augmentations, your health should be replenished in itself as you attack a monster, allowing you to trigger that peak performance once more. So if you're an insect glaive user out there, give this one a try. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Sword and Shield build. Now this build is a hybrid build utilizing DPS aspects, as well as support aspects. It is able to perform a healer role in teams, whilst at the same time being able to contribute in terms of DPS to a fight. So for this build, you'll need the Nergigante Helm Alpha, Rathalos Mel Beta, the Valhasak Braces Beta, Nergigante Coil Beta, Nergigante Greaves Beta, and the Friendship Charm 3. I'm also using the Broth Club 3 with an Affinity Increase Augmentation on it, Slot Upgrade Augmentation and a Health Regen Augmentation. As for your jewels, now there are a few mandatory ones for this build to work. Firstly, a couple of Friendship Jewels are required to get that wide range to max. Afterwards, go for some Gobbler Jewels to increase the rate that you drink potions and that. The Sated Jewel to provide the free meal skill. This first set of jewels will max out your support or healer viability, but the remaining jewels are for your DPS. This includes an elementalist jewel which boosts the power of the broth club, an attack jewel to get attack boost to level 4, tenderizer jewel to max out weakness exploit, and a sharp jewel to allow us to keep that blue sharpness for a little bit extra. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 361 attack, blue sharpness, 35% affinity, which is actually 85% when you're going for weak points, with decent defense against fire, water, and ice, but you're fairly weak to thunder and dragon. As for your skills, you'll have Wide Range Level 5. Wide Range allows for items used by you to be passed to your allies as well. So, for example, if you drink a healing drink, the healing effects will be passed on to them, as well as yourself. Wide Range at Level 5 ensures that your allies receive the full potential of whatever consumable you consume. The key skill required for a healer role. Anyway, you also have Attack Boost Level 4, Weakness Exploit Level 3, Speed Eating Level 3, this is thanks to the Gobbler Jaws. This allows you to consume potions, healing potions, whatever, at an incredible rate, meaning that you can heal yourself in seconds. This just allows you to be a more effective healer. You also have Maximum Might Level 3, Peak Performance Level 1, Free Mail Level 1, which gives you a chance of not consuming a potion or consumable when you use it, Protective Polish Level 1, and Non-Elemental Boost Level 1. You also have the set bonuses Nergigante's Hunger, Haste and Recovery, allowing you to regenerate your own health when attacking a monster. So as you can see, this is a dual build, allowing you to be a healer, whilst at the same time being able to deal some damage. Now if you are playing solo, you can completely drop the support side of this build if you want, dropping the Friendship Charm as well as the various jewels for more DPS or survivability orientated skills. The choice is up to you, but nonetheless, this is a very potent build and one of the best support builds when it comes to budget builds. Anyway, let's move on to the next budget build, which is for the Hammer. This is a DPS focused build focusing 
on being able to knock out a monster. So for this build you need a Nergigante Helm Alpha, Diablos Nero Mel Beta, Nergigante Van Braces Alpha, Diablos Nero Coil Beta, Nergigante Greaves Beta and the Knockout Charm Free. And for your weapon you're using the Ragefire Magda Flogger with an Infinity Increase augmentation on it. As for your jewels, there are a few mandatory ones here. Unfortunately, again, it does require two attack jewels to get your attack boost to level four. It also requires tenderizer jewels for that weakness exploit. And finally, there's a slider jewel to give us that 30% extra affinity when sliding as the hammer is again, one of those weapons that benefit from sliding attacks. Anyway, if you don't want it done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 1,362 attack with green sharpness, 25% affinity, which is actually 75 so long as you go for monster weak points, 420 blast rating with a decent defense against fire, but you're fairly weak to the rest. As for the skills, you'll have attack boost level 4, weakness exploit level 3, slugger level 3, maximum might level 3, agitator level 2, a byproduct of the gear but can still be useful for boosting our affinity and attack, resentment level 2, which increases our attack when we actually get hit by a monster and have a portion of red health, and affinity slide in level 1. You also have the set bonuses Nerikagante's Hunger, Ace and Recovery, and the Diablos Mastery Bludgeoner, making it easier to knock out a monster and at the same time, allowing our weapon to power up as it becomes blunter. And um, given the Ragefire Magda Flogger is not a weapon that sports any decent amount of sharpness, this actually comes in handy. So there we have it. This build does have a lot of DPS potential and even some crowd control and abilities thanks to the fact that it can knock out monsters. However, it's not always the easiest to craft, especially when it comes to the jewels. Now you can do some editing if you want. You can reduce the knockout power of this build in favor of DPS, especially if the jewels are not in your favor. You could take out the KO charm free, for example, and put in a exploited charm instead, granting you some weakness exploit levels there. This means that you'll only require one tenderizer jewels to max out weakness exploit. That will leave you with some sockets left, in which case you can put in some KO jewels or other jewels of your choice. Nonetheless, it's still a fun build to use and I am a big fan of the Zora Magdaros hammer, but that's mainly for the way it looks. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is for the heavy bow gun. Now, both the heavy and light bow guns can fill numerous roles, thanks to the sheer amount of ammunition types they can bring to a hunt. With the heavy bow gun and this budget build, we're going to be utilizing the spread ammunition type mainly the spread free ammunition type. This will allow us to bring high amounts of DPS to hunt, but requires you to be at close range. So for this build, I'm using the Xenojiva Headgear Beta, the Dover Mail Beta, Xenojiva Claws Beta, the Xenojiva Spine Beta, the Vasyov Greaves Beta, and the Awaken Charm 2. As for your weapon, you're using the Destructions Fusillade, which has an infinity increase augmentation on it. As for your jewels, there are a few mandatory ones here. A release jewel is strongly recommended, as well as two attack jewels. Afterwards, I've added Tenderizer Jewels and Mighty Jewels to boost our affinity. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 326 attack, with 75% affinity so long as you go for weak points, no element, average deviation. For the custom mods, I've added close range up to boost the power of our spread shots, and you'll have the Wyvern's Heart special ammunition type. As for your defenses, you'll have strong defenses against water, thunder, and ice, but you're fairly weak to fire and dragon. As for your skills, you'll have attack boost level 4, free element or ammo up level 3. This increases the magazine size of whatever ammunition you are using. Weakness exploit level 3, blight resistance level 2. This is a byproduct of the gear but can still be useful as it allows you to resist certain blight effects. Flinch free level 2, again a byproduct of the gear but can still be useful when it comes to preventing knockbacks. Spread shots level 1, increasing the power of our spread ammunition type and maximum might level 1. You also have the set bonuses Xeno Jeeva's Divinity, allowing you the spare shot skill, which gives your shots a chance of not consuming a bullet when you fire. So there we have it. As you can see, we've had to sacrifice a lot of DPS potential in order to get the Xeno Jeeva Divinity set bonus, unfortunately. But sometimes if the wins are in your favor and multiple bullets are not used up thanks to that spare shot skill, it means you can put out a lot of damage. But unfortunately, you're relying a little bit on luck. This build can be augmented if you want to drop the spare shot skill, but means that you're going to have to reload more often. Also with this build, remember that you can swap out the weapon so long as it has spread shot free ammunition types. Also be aware though of the recoil and reload times if you do decide to swap out the weapon. And if they have an incredibly high amount of recoil or a slow reload time, it may be better to swap out the close range up mods for ones to counter those issues. Nonetheless though, this is a strong build so long as you can get close to a monster. 
Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is for the Light Bow Gun. This again is a DPS build that utilizes weapons that have rapid fire elemental ammo. So it's an elemental DPS build. So for this, you'll need the Nergagante Helm Beta, the Rathalos Mail Beta, Kaiser Van Braces Beta, the Rathsol Coil Beta, and the Kirin Leg Guards Beta. I'm also using the Master's Charm 3, and for my weapon, I'm using the Diora's Hornet Light Bow Gun with a health regen augmentation on it. The Aura's Hornet has rapid fire ice ammunition attached to it, so that is gonna be my primary ammo used with this build. As for your jewels, again, unfortunately, there are one or two mandatory ones, the main one being a release jewel if you're able to get your hands on it to max out that ammo up skill. Afterwards, frost jewels to boost the damage of our frost ammunition type, a mighty jewel to max out maximum might, and then some expert jewels if you have them. I've also added a mind's eye jewel to provide you the ballistic skill, increasing the effective range of your shots. Anyway, if you don't want it done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 253 attack, 60% affinity, which is actually 100% should you be going for weak points, with low deviation. For the custom mods, I've added recoil, suppressor, and you'll have the wyvern blast special ammo. As for your defense, you'll have a decent defense against fire and thunder, but you're fairly weak to the rest. As for your skills, you'll have critical eye level 5, ice attack level 3. Unfortunately, when it comes to the light bow gun and heavy bow guns, elemental ammo, you can't really go above the level 3 mark as it doesn't really increase the damage anymore. You have ammo up level 3, weakness exploit level 3, maximum might level 3, windproof level 2, a byproduct of the gear, and ballistics level 1. You also have the set bonuses, Wrath of Lost Mastery, critical elements. So as you can see, this is a pretty straightforward elemental damage build for the light bow gun. This build can also work with elemental ammunition types for the heavy bow gun, but you may also notice it doesn't have the Xeno Jeeva's divinity. So we're going to be reloading a lot with this build. Nonetheless, it is still quite powerful, especially when you utilize monster weaknesses. This build will also work with any other weapon that utilizes rapid fire elemental ammo, but if you do swap out the Deora's Hornet, just remember to swap out the Frost Jewels as well to match whatever element you are using. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is for the Gunlands. This build is a little bit of a quirky build, utilizing the artillery gameplay style rather than the swing lance gameplay style. But utilizing the artillery style of gameplay allows us to deal fixed damage to a monster regardless of their elemental resistances or defenses. So for this build you need the Dragon King Eye Patch Alpha, the Damascus Mel Beta, the Diablos Nero Braces Beta, Nogagante Coil Beta, and the Death Stench Heals Beta. You'll then have an artillery charm free, and for my weapon I'm using the Earthshaker Magda Lahat. This has a health regen augmentation on it. As for your jewels, unfortunately there are a few annoying ones to get here. First of all, getting your hands on a sharp jewel is strongly recommended as the protective polish is a key skill in this build. Afterwards, I've gone for a tenderizer jewel to max out weakness exploit, or handicraft jewels to allow us to get to white sharpness, blue sharpness, attack jewels to boost my attack boost, vitality jewels to add a little bit of extra health, and enduring jewels, which provide the item prolonger skill, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Anyway, if you don't know what I've done here, you should have a build with 115 health, 100 stamina, 522 attack, a sliver of blue sharpness, minus 5% affinity, but this should be 45 so long as you're going for monster weak points. When you're swinging your lance, remember that artillery attacks don't benefit from affinity whatsoever. 420 blast rating with long level 4 shelling types. You'll also have a decent defense, especially against fire, but you're fairly weak to thunder and dragon. As for your skills, you have attack boost level 4, weakness exploit level 3, focus level 3. The reason we've gone for focus is that we are primarily going to be utilizing charged shelling attacks, and focus does affect these attack types. You have handicraft level 3, artillery level 3, increasing the damage of our shelling attacks, item prolonger level 3. The reason we've gone for item prolonger level 3 is it increases the amount of time that protective polish is actually active on your weapon when you use it. And as shelling attacks eat through sharpness super quick, this is to help alleviate that aspect a little bit. You have health boosts level 1 and protective polish level 1. Now this gameplay style isn't for everyone, but it ensures guaranteed damage against the monster. It is also more defensive than the swing lance method of playing, as the attacks are fairly quick and you're able to block in between them. But that being said, the way this build is made up, thanks to weakness exploit and attack boost, you're also able to perform some swing lance attacks if you so desire. But if you're a gun lance user out there, I strongly recommend trying this one out and see what you think about it. Because once you get the charge shots down and you're more used to using them, it's quite a fun build. Anyway, let's move on to the last build, which is the hunting horn budget build. This build is again a DPS knockout build, showing that the hunting horn is not just a support weapon. 
It is also going to be making use of a horn that has some of the best songs in the game. So for this build you'll need the Dragon King Eye Patch Alpha, Dover Male Beta, Kaiser Van Braces Beta, Nogagante Coil Beta, the Death Stench Heals Beta and the KO Charm 3. I'm also using the Gamma Horn 2 which has an affinity increase augmentation on it and a health regen augmentation on it. The main reason I am using this horn is because of the songs it provides to a team. It provides attack boost, defense boost, health boost, wind resistance on top of the self buffs it provides the hunter. It is basically the budget version of the Devil Joe horn in terms of songs. Anyway, as for the jewels, unfortunately there are a few tricky ones here to get, but first I would strongly recommend going for the sonorous jewel to boost the amount of time our songs are active. Afterwards I've gone for handicraft jewels to allow us to get to white sharpness, mighty jewels to allow us the maximum might skill, a sharp jewel to provide protective polish, and finally an expert jewel. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 911 attack, white sharpness, 98% affinity, so long as you're going for weak points and have maximum stamina, 150 blast rating, with a decent defense, especially against fire, but you're fairly weak to thunder. You also have the following skills, attack boost level 4, handicraft level 4, weakness exploit level 3, slugger level 3, maximum might level 3, critical eye level 3, Horn Maestro level 1, this is the skill provided by the Sonorous Jewel, allowing our songs to remain active for longer periods, and Protective Polish level 1. So, this is a straightforward DPS build for the Hunting Horn, utilising some of the best songs. Now when using this build, just remember to go for monster heads. Not only are they normally a monster's weak point, but thanks to the Slugger skill, it means that you can potentially knock out the monster, leaving them open for you and your team to deal more damage to them. Now the Gamma Horn itself may not be the strongest in the game, but as I've said, it is by far one of the best ones when it comes to the actual songs it has available to it, which makes this Hunting Horn build quite potent. So there we have it, those are another series of budget builds for Monster Hunter World. Now as I said, some of the jewels in this are a little bit tricky to come by, and in all honesty, a lot of this can be edited or changed slightly, depending on what you have access to or what you're willing to farm for. I'm hoping these just provide templates and ideas for you to get creative. But remember that almost any task in Monster Hunter World can be taken on with any weapon or gear set. You don't have to use what is used in these videos. These are just the budget builds that I like to use. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or informative. And until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you a budget build special for Monster Hunter World. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like for more.